Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Drop. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the best tractions that you can get right now. And of course, traction, in my personal opinion, is the most important aspect of a basketball shoe. Uh, just because, you know, I'm a guard and I rely on my speed pretty heavily, so I need to stop pretty quickly and have a very responsive shoe, of course. And I feel like for most people, the vast majority of people, uh, I feel like traction is pretty much number one or up there being very, very important. Uh, I guess if you're like, um, I don't know, if you're just like a post-up player, you don't need it as much, you know what I mean? Uh, but it's still pretty dang important, you know what I mean? You don't wanna be sliding around all over the place. So yeah, traction is super duper important and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the best tractions that you can get right now. So if you guys do wanna get any of these shoes, I try to leave an affiliate link in the description box. And if you do choose to get any of these shoes, it does help me out if you buy it through the affiliate link in the description box. And as always, thank you guys so much for all the support. And also a lot of you guys have been asking me what socks I've been wearing in all of my videos. It's my brand, it's called Young Hone. It's kinda like a athleisure, kind of basketball sock. I mean, I've been wearing that sock to play basketball, uh, but it's not specifically uh, made for basketball because, you know, it's more like a thinner type of material. Usually in basketball socks, you, it's like a lot thicker, right? But I want to have a thinner sock that also looks good, super duper comfortable and has high quality materials. So it is available for pre-order. So it'll take a couple of weeks if you guys do order it right now, but the website is live and I'll leave a link to that in the description box as well. And as always, thank you guys so much for all the support. But yeah, let's get it started off with, of course, the WoW 11. So the WoW 11 is using GCU, and GCU has a really good track record. It's it's from Leaning, of course, and Leaning owns Way of Wade, and uh, yeah, Way of Wade also uses Leaning's technology. And GCU is their ground control unit, and they have all these statistics. It's like, you know, 25% better stop than traditional rubber. It has better durability uh, and all that stuff, right? And it also is lighter than traditional rubber. So uh, they have all the numbers. But yeah, in pretty much all the shoes that have had uh, GCU, the traction has been freaking amazing. And the WoW 11 has a god tier, but you have, you stop pretty much on a dime, right? So the stop is amazing, as well as the dust performance, it picked up pretty minimal dust. But if it does pick up dust, it, it's a very, very easy wipe for the WoW 11. Uh, also for durability, it's not, I don't think it would be the best tower because the grooves are pretty shallow, but it's not the softest rubber. So I don't think it'll be terrible on the outdoor court, but uh, I don't think it'll be the best. So if you're playing on indoor court, WoW 11, amazing. And same thing with the AC12 or the All City 12 Encore, it's using GCU, it's by way of Wade. But yeah, the AC12 Encore has a great bite, pretty much instantaneous stop as well. And uh, you have a very good bite through dust too. And if it does pick up dust, if you're playing on a super dirty court, it's a really easy wipe too. So the AC12 Encore, just like the Y11 has great traction. Next, of course, we got the 808 4 Ultra. So it's using uh, pretty much traditional rubber, uh, but yeah, that'll be uh, way better for outdoor use because the grooves are way thicker. The rubber is really hard as well. So durability should be fine. You do need to break it in a little bit, but once you do break it, it doesn't even take that long to break in. It takes like one day. Uh, but once you do break it in, it has a, an amazing stop pretty much top tier stop as well. And if you are playing on a dusty court, it picks up very minimal dust too. Uh, not as loud for the squeak, but it does have a pretty loud squeak if you're into that. So there is the 808 for Ultra. Next, we got the Wade Flash. So the Wade Flash is a $100 shoe. Uh, one of my favorite uh, budget shoes that you can get for the past like year, and they just uh, released like a new uh, kind of updated version of it. It's like the Young DNA it has like a, a leather material. Uh, the leather material is pretty nice for the, the price, but it's not the best. But either way, the traction is phenomenal. Uh, if you're playing on a clean court, instantaneous stop, amazing. You stop on, on a dime and all that good stuff. Uh, also picks up very minimal dust. And also for durability, you should be fine because the rubber is super duper hard. The grooves are thick and also very deep. So the weight flash, I really like that shoe because of the amazing traction. And you get a little bit better support with the Young DNA colorway, right? So there is the Wade Flash. Next, we got the Kai 1 as well as the Kai 1 Speed. However, from my uh, personal experience, the Kai 1 Speed picks up a little bit more dust than the Kai 1, right? Uh, if you're playing on a super dirty court, you're just gonna be uh, sliding around a good amount. Uh, and also it is a little bit more inconsistent on dust, right? So if you're uh, playing on like a moderately dusty court and you do like a weird stop, it can slide out pretty dangerously, which I didn't like, right? Uh, if I kept up with my wipe tile break, it was good to go. It's just the Kai 1 speed picks up a little bit more dust than the regular Kai 1. If you're playing on a clean court, however, the Kai 1 speed 
amazing stop. Very, very loud hyper squeak as well, which I really like. The regular Kai one, of course, doesn't squeak as much, uh, but also you do need to break it in. But once you break it in, you have a really nice solid stop, right? So on a clean court, very solid stop, as well as uh, on dust, it picks up very minimal dust and it's a really consistent bite on dust, unlike the Kai one speed. But durability, I feel like, you know, neither of the shoes are gonna be the best, you know what I mean? Uh, it's like a softer rubber. However, the Kai one, the regular Kai one feels a little bit softer. Uh, for the rubber, you know what I mean? So I feel like the outdoor court will eat through the Kai one. The Kai one speed, it will be a little bit better for outdoor use, but still not the best because the rubber is a little bit softer. So anyways, they're still really nice. And also both of those shoes have like an outsole curvature, which I really like as well. Next, of course, Under Armour Flow. Can't really say too much about it. I mean, it does pick up dust, uh, but it's not terrible. But if you're playing on a clean court, it's the hardest stop that you'll experience ever. You know, it's a really, really nice stop. Durability, not the best, not terrible, however, so. Uh, yeah, uh, any shoe with flow, you guys already know. <laughs> All right, next we got the Dawn Issue 6. So the Dawn Issue 6 surprised the hell out of me, but uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy about that shoe because Don Donovan Mitchell's like kind of shoe line has been very, very terrible from the beginning, in my personal opinion, but it's been getting progressively better and better, which I really like. So yeah, the Dawn Issue 6 is one of my favorite hoop shoes of this year, right? And it has an amazing stop on a clean court. Very loud hyper squeak as well, which I do like, which has nothing to do with performance. And also it picks up very minimal dust, which I really like too. Uh, durability, I would say is okay. You know, the rubber is a little bit soft. You know, it's on the softer side of things and the rubber is like the grooves are a little thin, uh, but you do have a lot of grooves. So you should be fine on an outdoor court. So uh, yeah, the Dawn HG6, very, very nice. And same thing, of course, with the Harden Volume 8. Uh, the Harden Volume 8, like you have an amazing stop on a clean court. It picks up a little bit more dust than the Dawn HG6 from my personal experience. But if you do keep up with your wipes, you should be fine. Uh, and it's not that bad on dust, uh, but it does pick it up, right? And for durability, I feel like it'll be okay. Uh, like, especially where the circles are, the rubber is really thin. So I don't know how that will uh, hold up, but uh, the other parts are a little bit better. So I feel like it's not the worst, but also not the best for outdoor courts. So uh, yeah, the Harden Volume 8 is very, very nice. And of course, we got the AE1 from Adidas as well. Adidas has been, uh, they stepped up their game. <laughs> All their hoop shoes are pretty much amazing performing hoop shoes. So you guys already know the AE1, amazing stop, uh, pretty much top tier bite. And also it picks up very minimal dust. As far as like the, uh, you know, the outdoor use goes, I feel like durability wouldn't be the best because rubber is a little bit hard. And also we do have those grooves, which means we have less contact with the ground, which means you have more force in like a smaller surface area, which would, you know, wear out the rubber a little bit faster. But uh, other than that, if you're playing on a clean court, A1 has top tier traction, right? So yeah, I mean, uh, I've had two colorways, you know, the translucent rubber as well as the A1 low, which is like a solid rubber. And they both have been amazing for me. So the A1 you guys already know is amazing. Next, we got the Nike Sabrina 2. So the Sabrina 2, just like the Sabrina 1, has amazing stops on a clean court. So if you're playing on a clean court, amazing, amazing stops. Uh, and if you're playing on a dusty court, it picks up very minimal dust and it bites through dust extremely well too. So the Sabrina 2 has amazing traction and also really nice loud high pitch squeak, which has nothing to do with performance. Next, we got uh, the Zoom Freak 6 or the Giannis Freak 6, you do need to break it in, but once you break it in, you have a really, really nice stop on a clean court. It does pick up dust though. So I, I would say it picks up dust more than uh, all these, uh, all the other shoes on this list, right? So if you're playing on a really dirty court or moderately dusty court, probably not the best option, but if you do keep up with your wipes on a moderately dusty court, you should be fine. If you're playing on a super dusty court, however, the Freak 6 is not the best, right? Uh, and also it has a nice lot hyper squeak, which I do like, but yeah, the Freak 6, uh, also is pretty dang consistent, especially if you're playing on a really clean court or like a uh, slightly dusty court, right? Uh, next, of course, we got the GT Cut 3. You know, a very, very expensive shoe, but yeah, you do have a very nice uh, bite as well as, you know, it picks up pretty minimal dust. And if it does pick up dust, you do have just a very slight wipe. So I right, GT Cut 3, amazing. And same thing with the GT Cut Academy, which is only $90, you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, I would say it picks up less dust than the GT Cut 3, which is amazing, right? Also, durability seems like it'll be better because you do have more grooves, you have more surface area than the GT Cut 3. So uh, if you're playing on outdoor court, and also it's a cheaper shoe, uh, the GT Cut Academy is going to be better. So yeah, the GT Cut Academy, amazing. Next, of course, we got the Rigor AR1. You guys already know, like I've had a lot of colorways and pretty much every single colorway has been top tier for traction. Besides translucent, the translucent also picks up dust. So probably stay away from that. 
if you're playing on a dusty court, but for any other colorway, you should be fine. All of them have been top tier for me. You have an amazing stop on a clean court and bites through dust extremely well and picks up very minimal dust, which I really like. Durability, I feel like would be pretty good. Not the best, uh, but you know, the rubber is like on the harder side of things and you have a lot of grooves, right? Next, of course, we got the Player One Plus. You guys already know, one of my favorite hoop shoes of last year and also this year. And uh, yeah, it just has a really hard stop, you know, and also picks up very minimal dust. And also you should be fine on outdoor court. It's a very hard rubber. You have really thick grooves too. Uh, and also literally every single color that I've had has had amazing traction. So if, you're, if you have a solid rubber, translucent rubber, whatever color rubber, all the colorways have had amazing traction for me. So uh, yeah, the Player One Plus is really nice. Uh, next, we got the 361 degrees, Big 3 5.0 Quick, as well as the Quick Pro. Let's try to stay away from the, the translucent also. The, the first colorway that I had had like parts of the outsole that were translucent. So uh, that did pick up a little bit of dust, right? But I got some other colorways in with a fully solid rubber and uh, it's it was amazing, right? So on a clean court, amazing stop. You stop on a dime, very, very loud hyper squeak, which has nothing to do with the performance, of course. But also, uh, yeah, the solid rubber picks up very minimal dust and it bites through dust extremely well. Uh, but if it does pick up dust, it's a really easy wipe, right? So uh, that's that shoe has been my backup shoe uh, for the past couple of weeks, right? So I've been playing in pretty terrible shoes <laughs> that pick up a lot of dust. For example, uh, <clears throat> the Tatum 3, you know? Uh, but yeah, and then I switched into the Big 3 5 Quick Pro, uh, and then it's, it had amazing traction. And then the Tatum 3 just picks up so much dust. I was like, oh man, you know? So anyways, there's that shoe. And uh, next, of course, we got the Anta Shockwave 6, the regular Shockwave 6. Do not get the Pro. The Pro has been freaking terrible for me. Just sliding out like crazy in the, uh, the 6 Pro. But the regular six has like a herringbone traction pattern, has an amazing bite. Uh, so yeah, you have you stop pretty much on a dime. And also it picks up a little bit of dust, you know what I mean? But it's not terrible. And if, if you keep up with your wipes, you should be fine. And it also has an outsole curvature, which I like. And it has a very loud high pitch squeak, which has nothing to do with performance. And with the dirt track rubber that they're using on that shoe, the rubber is really, really hard. Uh, grooves are thick and deep, so you should be fine on outdoor court. And last but not least, of course, we got the equalizer, the EQLZ. 24 7 which ha which is inspired by the shark skin so the microscopic shark skin whatever uh and also it's like a pressure map of the foot which is pretty cool as well but yeah once you break it in it has amazing traction i, I wouldn't say it's like the hardest stop but it has a really consistent stop right so if you're playing on a clean court really solid bite if you're playing on a dusty court really really solid bite as well durability i feel like would be okay you know like the grooves are it's weird you know what i mean because like nubs that are like really deep but then like kind of protrudes out but it moves pretty easily so i don't know i feel like it might rip off if you're playing on outdoor court uh, but of course take that with a grain of salt um but yeah now that's my list of the best shoes with the best tractions that you can get right now and um yeah i'm very very happy because there's been a lot of shoes with really nice tractions yeah for the past couple years you know so anyways that about concludes this video again if you guys want to get any shoes i try to leave in the feed link in the description box but that's it thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.